test by just eight points. And then on Sunday last, England leveled the series, winning the second by a similar margin of eight points. Kenny Carter is out of the England side with a broken leg and a very bad broken leg at that. So England have had to ring the changes. And they brought in a couple of Cradley Heath specialists, uh, Phil Collins and Alan Graham. Let's have a look at the full lineup of both teams. England with two sets of brothers. Uh, David Jessup is the England captain. And along with him are Chris Morton, Michael Lee, Phil Collins, Alan Graham, Peter Collins, and the reserves of Simon Wigg and Andy Graham. And the American team virtually unchanged, Bobby Schwartz the skipper, and with him Dennis Sigalos, Lance King, John Cook, Sean Moran, Sam Emelanco, and the reserves this time are Rick Miller and Eddie Ingalls. The match is over 18 heats, we join it for the first heat, and our commentator is Dave Lanning. So heat one of the third test, absolutely all tied up. On the inside, Chris Morton, Red England. Next to him, in white, Bobby Schwartz, and ever present in the series here back at one of his old speedway tracks Cradley he started his career back in 1978 he is in grid 2 grid 3 has a rider in blue Michael Lee who could be the key figure in this England squad without its skipper Kenny Carter and on the outside the stylish impressive Dennis Sagalos in yellow and black so heat number one they're looking up for the green light which is signalled when the green lights on, of course, are under starter's orders, and the tapes will go. So we're ready now for heat number one. And into the first corner, it looks like Schwartz is there. Schwartz hits the front. Schwartz and Morton together. Now, who will level out in front? It's Bobby Schwartz, who just gets clear for America. Morton is second in third place with Sigala doing the hard run around the outside. And uh, Schwartz looking back over his shoulder as Morton switches to his attack around the outside. Lee is at the back, and Morton swinging inside, outside, trying to find a way past Bobby Schwartz, who, of course, knows his way around this 338-metre Bradley circuit. Hasn't had a particularly high-scoring series so far, Bobby. Five points in the first two tests. But he's looking very comfortable here in Heat 1. Sigalos in third place there. You can see the distances between the riders. Morton still waiting for an opportunity. Schwartz going into the last lap. Can't afford to miss out. Ominously, perhaps, for England. Lee has been dropped off at the back. And it's not really good news for them. And Schwartz gets around the last two corners. Here comes Morton, and Morton gets out and almost loses it. Over the line, a win for Bobby Schwartz. Second place, Morton. Third place is Sigalos. America go into the lead after one heat. Heat two coming into the action, and for England, it's going to be Phil Collins and Alan Graham, the home pairing, both Cradley riders, in against Lance King and John Cook for the Americans. And America leading 4-2 as we come into heat two with three Cradley riders in contention. Collins, Graham and King all ride here for the heathen, so we'll know their fastest way around this heathen circuit. This is Lance King, who really has developed into an international rider of some status, still only 20 years old, from Carson City, Nevada originally. Now, of course, resident in California and over here with Cradley Heath in the British League. Could be an important figure for the Americans this afternoon. Phil Collins, of course, third of the Collins clan from Cheshire on his home track being brought into the side. And again, they'll be looking for his specialist advantage. He must know every piece of shale on this Cradley circuit. He's on the outside here. He does like to attack around the outside. A spectacular customer. And so heat two with the Americans 4-2 up. Looking across the line, the inside there, Lance King. Next to him in blue, Alan Graham. Grid three has John Cook in yellow and black for America. And on the outside, Phil Collins, England in red. Heat two. And oh, what a start there by the Americans. It's King and it is Cook. And the home pairinger being left behind. The Americans really got a fly right at the start there. Cook now just in front with King. And they build up a lead of what? Oh, 30 lengths already. Incredible pace from the Californians. Cook and King, of course, we recall at Swindon were their match winning pairing. We've lost Phil Collins there. And down two has gone Graham in England are at sixes and sevens and uh, well they have to stop it quite incredible there 
And it looks like Graham is in some trouble there. It looked like Phil Collins who stopped. The race has stopped in the interest of safety. With the and a, a collision there as Collins seemed to stop and Graham goes down. Let's have a look at it again. And you can see there, oh, just uh, trying to avoid him. And it was Graham who hit the fence with such a wallop and down he went I and mean, just clipped Phil Collins. And the bike really should have stopped. It seemed like it kept going. The ignition cutout not working there. And an untidy heap as Alan Graham goes down. The bike still going round. And that really is a disaster for the English. And Alan Graham coming out into the action for the restart of Heat 2. His partner, Phil Collins, being a judge by referee John Eccles, as being the cause of that incident. Alan, uh, who had an untidy tumble, has damaged the finger of his left hand, but he's okay for the restart. The Americans leading then 4-2, the restart of heat number two with on the inside there in white, it is Lance King. Next to him now, the lone Englishman, Alan Graham in blue, and on the outside in grid three now, John Cook. He's in yellow and black. The Americans got an absolute jet away at the first time of asking and will obviously be a little upset the race was stopped. They were well set for maximum points when the English pair collided. So can Graham get among them and split them up here as he's left on his own. Away they go again. And once again, it is the Americans who carve it up, up to the first turn. Again, it was cooked so very, very sprightly away from the start. King, and look at the distance already they've built up on Graham, who's plainly feeling his way. The match winning pair for the Americans at Swindon. And they look very sharp here at Crowley this afternoon. This is Cowboy Cook, who uh, has this week settled a disagreement and he's signaling his partner. They're making hands at Tic Tac out there. And this Cook, who settled after a little bit of dispute with Ipswich, happily found a new sponsor, which is keeping him with the witches. Lance King on the inside, it looks such a polished performer, so much in control, considering he's only 20 years old. Here is the last lap. Uh, we have lost. Graham, no, we haven't. He's run out of the picture. And Cook is winning it, looking back. So here is Cook over the line. King is second. Graham a long way back third, and the Americans are rampant already. Heat three coming up, the Americans six points in the lead by nine points to three. And in this race, England call on their most experienced pairing, Dave Jessup and Peter Collins going in against Sean Moran, there he is in white, and Sam Ermelenko for the Americans. So England looking to their two most vastly experienced international campaigners to stop the rot here in heat number three. We've got Collins on the inside in blue. Next to him in yellow, Sam Ermelenko. A newcomer, very lively one on the scene this year internationally. Grid three has Dave Jessup in red, and on the outside it is the mercurial Sean Moran in white for America. Heat three. Oh, that was a ragged start. A very ragged start. And it looks as though the referee, it's Johnny Glees, could be Jessup is the cause. And we all ran on heat three with the exclusion of the rider in red. Rider in red. And that indeed verifies that statement. Jessup and England are in real trouble. Now they've lost their skipper for a tape offence. The restart of Heat 3 without Dave Jessup excluded for a tape offence coming into his place, Simon Wigg, the reserve American 9 3 up. And so the revised pairings for England Simon Wigg and Red, Peter Collins in blue. The Americans have Sean Moran in white, Sam Ermelenko in yellow and black. Looking across the grid for Heat 3, then on the inside, Collins in blue. Next to him, Ermelenko, yellow, black. Grid 3 has Simon Wigg, who started his full-time British League career here at Cradley. He's in red, replacing Dave Jessup. And on the outside, it's Sean Moran, who might well have just teased Jessup through the tapes there. Heat 3, for the second time of asking, this time they are away. And from the inside, it's Ermelenko. Wigg moving out to cover Moran. Ermelenko leads it. Wigg coming around the outside. Ermelenko looking back for his partner. It is Ermelenko in front, now Wig in third place, it is Collins, and this is a tight one as Wig swings around the outside and gets past 
as they roar into lap number two. Moran really got squeezed out of the first corner. He's coming through inside Collins for third place. Really is tightening all up. In front, though, Wiggs, second place, Ervalenko. Third place, a rare battle going on between Collins and Sean Moran on the inside. Collins has repassed Moran as Ervalenko really takes it out wide, and Sean Moran is at the front, and that's a surprise. Encouraging form by Wig, Hardy with a couple of patched up broken ribs. Doesn't seem to have slowed him down much. He leads it. Second place, Ervalenko. Third place is Collins and Moran. He really did take a bit of an elbow at the first corner. He's not made up the ground, and that is a surprise in the American camp. But Wig is giving England. The first heats with America leading by 11 points to 7. Well, after three more heats, the Americans had retained just a four-point advantage. So with 12 heats to go, the United States are in front. And as we join it, Gary Newborn is talking to the England captain, Dave Jessup. Dave, you've been replaced in this next heat coming up. What's the thinking behind that? Well, obviously, I got excluded in the first one, and I seem to be struggling just a little bit there. Obviously, like one race, one race behind the boys, but uh, Simon went out and won the race when I was excluded. So, you know, we must give him another try. England can't carry anybody at the moment and you know even though I'm captain I don't obviously want to be replaced but I feel you know it's the team's at stake and, and we're doing what we think is the best thing at this stage. I'll be ready for the rest of the, the match obviously. Still that four point gap, 20 to America, 16 to England. Heat seven with Simon Wig coming in for Dave Jessup to partner Peter Collins for the Americans. It is Bobby Schwartz and Dennis Sagalos. So looking across the line on the inside it is Peter Collins who really did hit the traps and his last outing. Next to him in white, Bobby Schwartz. Grid three has Simon Wigg, who won his opening ride. And on the outside, Dennis Sigalos yet to win a race. Heat seven. It's getting tense out there. This time they are clear, and it's Schwartz who shows Schwartz and Sigalos around the outside. Schwartz looking for his partner. He'll look over his shoulder there. He knows where Sigalos is coming from, and that really was perfect team riding tactics. Whilst this pair have won the World Pairs title, and this is their strength. As uh, first is Wig, who comes up to challenge, and Simon Wig will push and thrust and go and try the outside runner. Schwartz almost overcooks the corner. Sigalos is waiting for him. This really is intriguing speed. And again, Wig trying to get around the outside. I think he may have done so. And Sigalos is aware that he has got a lion right on his tail. And that really was brave cornering from Simon Wig to split these Americans. And Sigalos will turn tail and go. To the last one, Zagalos, front wheel pouring the air as he hits the corner. Second place, we a good, bold, enterprising piece of speed wave from Wiggy. Zagalos is still in front of Wig, will make a despairing effort, almost uh, overslides, holds on. Zagalos wins it, second place, good second place too from Simon Wig. Third is Bobby Schwartz, a 4-2 heat advantage to the Americans who now push further into the lead. Now, America 24, England 18, and that will please the American fans. And there are many of them who follow these Californians with British League sides. That will please them here at Dudley Wood as we move into Heat 8 with Chris Morton and Michael Lee coming out for the English against Lance King and John Cook for America. Morton there, who is an ever-present, hasn't missed one of these test matches since the series started back in 1980. We all know about his fighting qualities, if only this little man from Bellevue could uh, get out of the start, what a potential world champion he would be. Makes life interesting at the back, with his battling through, but it's so much easier up front, we've seen that this afternoon. As we look across the grid, on the inside is John Cook with five points from his opening two rides. Next to him in red, we have Chris Morton who has two points. Grid three has Lance King with three points to his credit. And on the outside, it is Michael Lee, who we have seen can really build up a head of steam up to the first corner. Taking their time to settle. And tucked in is Lee. And when he does get clear, this lanky pool pirate really does build up daylight between himself and the rivals. Heat eight. Oh, here we go. And from the outside and the inside, it is Cook. And it is Lee. Lee trying the outside run. And uh, oh, leaves a gap there and almost through it goes King. It is Cook. In fact, Lee is in second place. King is third. And Michael Lee trying to go right around the outside.
outside of Cook, Cook's looking for his partner, and through on the inside, almost on his back wheel, comes Lance King. The referee hasn't been happy about the way the Americans have been mono-wheeling, but Lee holds on to second place as Cook has been a revelation in this last season. And he's come straight back into the swing of things, and really looks world-class. He leads it. Lee is second. King hanging on to third place. Chris Morton again paying the penalty for missing the start. He's at the back. And Cook has time to look over his inside shoulder to see where Michael Lee is and Lee is what. Oh, four or five lengths back as they hit the last lap here of Heat 8. And it could well be the Americans will gain some advantage here again, although Lee is really pushing hard after Cook and making sure he doesn't uh, go to sleep over the line. And here's John Cook winning it for America. Second place, Lee. Third place is Lance King. Another 4-2 Heat win for the Americans. That means they're now eight points in front. Well, all the action around the first corner of Heat 8. Watch for the inside, John Cook getting away. And Michael Lee trying to make his run on the outside. And Cook is aware that Lee is attacking down the outside. He moves out to mid-track and almost leaves a hole for his partner, Lance King, who just can't find. You can see Cook has a look, sees it's Lee behind him and goes. America 28, England 20. That's the score with eight races gone. Heat nine coming up. Where can England find some inspiration? Maybe from Andy Graham, younger brother of Alan Graham, who will come into Heat nine to partner Phil Collins. He'll be in blue. There is Phil Collins in against Sean Moran and Sam Ermolenko for America. Phil Collins, of course, has an exclusion in his first ride, then a win, and he did look to be very much in control when he did win that last race. As we look across the lineup from the inside, Andy Graham, former British champion, now with Wolverhampton just across the way, about six miles away from here actually, the Wolves now, Roar at Monmore Green. And Andy Graham, former Birmingham rider, very much at home in the Midlands here. He'll be on the inside, and really England could do with him coming up trumps here. And they're beginning to run out of Rabbits to pull out of the hat. Next to him in yellow, Sam Ramalenko. Grid three has Phil Collins on the outside. It's Sean Moran. Heat number nine, away they go. And it looks like Collins away again. Collins and Moran sweeping around the outside. Who will get these wheels back in line? It is Collins and it is Moran. And it's very tight as they hit the pit corner. Collins in front. Moran will try to lock back underneath. Hasn't quite got the legs. Third place in the battle too, but it is Anne Graham in third place for England. And it's England gaining the advantage here in heat nine. Phil Collins, the heathen. He knows his way around this track, he's the man they're looking to, and he really did ride an impressive first lap to hold out the attack and aggression of Sean Moran. Moran, quick glance on his inside shoulder, he knows he's got Andy Graham. Graham anxious to catch the eye of two anchor. Oh, Graham trying the outside run, and Moran is looking for him as they come into the last lap. He's riding a bold race. Here's young Graham. Moran looking down at his machine, maybe not too happy with its beat. Phil Collins a long way in front. Here is Philip Collins going to win heat nine. He takes it. Second place, Moran. Third place is Andy Graham. That's a 4-2 heat advantage to England, who've clawed back the deficit to six points now. Well, Carl Glover, how are you going to get these six points back? Because you can't quite get the team riding together this afternoon. No, we're badly missing the starts to the first corner. We're getting one rider there instead of two. Uh, hence the decision to start using the trap of Simon Wigan and Andy Graham and hope we can get to the, the corner as a team, and then we'll take it from there. Do you not get the feeling, though, that the, the Americans do ride better as a team? They're riding good as a team, but as I've said, they're getting two riders to the corner alongside one another, whereas we're either one at the front or one at the back or whichever. We've got to try and get two together, preferably at the front. You've already made one tactical change, bringing in a replacement for your captain, who's uh, not doing so well as he normally does in these tests. Um, what can you do now? It's, uh, I think it's going to boil down to the two reserves. We've got to use them more or less as many times as I can because they're two consistently good gators and they should be able to compete with the Americans to the first corner. America still six points up, 30-24. Heat 10 coming up, and Simon Wigg coming into the action for England, who face a difficult task. He comes in with Michael Lee. This is their most successful duo, in against Bobby Schwartz and Dennis Sigalos for America. At the halfway stage, it's interesting to record that, Eng that England, although they're struggling against the Americans, can't find the solidarity. The Americans have only had two last places from 10 heats. That's their solidarity that England must try to match and indeed improve on as we move into the second part of the meeting. 
Wig Weary Call split this pairing last time out very spectacularly. As we look across the grid from the inside, Bobby Schwartz, the American skipper in white. Next to him, Michael Lee Blue. Grid three has Dennis Segalos, and on the outside, it's Simon Wig. These have been the most two successful Englishmen individually. Let's see how they'll pair up in the England camp. They're desperate to get two Englishmen to the corner together rather than split apart. That's where the difference seems to have lied. The Americans riding so well together as pairings, as England tend to get one man out in front and the other boy having to battle from the back. These two can both start, and Heat 10 should be quite an interesting one. Here we go. And up to the first corner, there was a brush, and it was uh, Wick who came off worst. Lee's in front, second place. It is Schwartz, third is Segalos, and we've got an elbow going up to the first corner. It really is getting rough and tough out there as Lee leads it. Now Segalos moving up into second place. Segalos chasing hard after Lee. Schwartz is third, and Lee's got a lot of work to do at the back. And here comes Dennis Segalos chasing hard after Lee. Two big, tall, lanky fellows. And uh, their battle is thoroughly joined here around the pit corner. Schwartz is in some trouble at the back and through has gone Simon Wig. And uh, Schwartz really was sleeping there. There is the battle up front. And Wick has squeezed through into third place as we watch the battle for the lead as they come into the last lap now. It is still the second place Segalos, third place Wick. Schwartz moved out and seems to be in some trouble way at the back. So England fighting, trying to best back this advantage as overline Mike Lee. Impressive stuff again from him. Segalos is second, third place is Wig. That reduces the deficit to now just four points. Yes, England punning back. Four points deficit, 32-28. The next three heats were very evenly contested. And so with five heats to go, America have a six-point advantage now. 42-36, the score. Heat 14 coming up. England plays Simon Wig, their reserve again in red, and Peter Collins. That's the partnership in against Lance King and John Cook for the Americans. is Wig and once again he has been a trump card for England he has shown some tremendous tenacity has twice split the American pairing when they have packed together to try to team ride him out and uh, he's shown an awful lot of aggression the kind of spirit that really England need now as we approach the final stages it's still very close this is heat 14 it could still go either way the Americans have King and Cook have been a very successful partnership can we get away this time yes I think he can he's up to the corner and so too is Collins and England show in front it is Wig it is Collins in second place in third place it is King and this is exactly what England were looking for as the Americans now try to find a way through they're bursting they're buckling here comes Cook. and it is terribly tight Glenn can throw a handkerchief over all four can the English pair and keep together Cook going the high wide handsome way unable to find a way through and it's England in front the first time they managed to get two men to the corner together and this is sensational speedway as Cook now tries to split them Collins on the outside Wig on the inside the Americans are right up behind them it really is terribly close as we come down into the pit corner and Cook and King are right on their back wheels and here comes Cook around the outside, he might just have the legs as he goes, squeezed out again by Wig. My word, what some speed Wig can throw, a handkerchief over all four and the English pairing are really riding quite beautifully together and they've shaken off the Americans, Cook has stopped and he may well have thrown the towel in but that is a really fantastic maximum heat win for England Collins wins it in the end, Wig is second in third place, it is King and that really has set this test match on its head, it is wide open Absolutely perfect team riding from the England pairing. They were under pressure from all corners from the Americans, but it was Collins and Wig riding together as though they were Siamese twins, and that anchored it, and we really have a battle building up now. Yes, the score was just four heats to go. Uh, England trailing by only two points, America leading 43 to 41. We'll continue. And two points down with just four heats to go. So, Heat 15, just four races to go and two points in it. The Americans 43, England 41. Could not be a better scripted finale, surely. Chris Morton and uh, Michael Lee, the English pairing in Heat 15, in against uh, Sean Moran and Sam Ermolenko, who have proved to be America's weakest pairing. So maybe the England fight back will continue as we approach the final stages of another compelling test match. The parity between these two nations really is quite remarkable. A reminder, 
that the Americans won the first one by eight points. England returned the compliment with an eight-point win at Sheffield. It's going to be a close call here, whatever happens. So we look across the grid on the inside, Michael Lee Blue. Next to him in white, Sean Moran. Grid three has Chris Morton, and Chris really has collected a couple of coconuts in his last two outings, and the English will be looking to him here to produce one of his party pieces. On the outside, Sam Ermalenko in yellow and black. And, well, anything could happen. Could still go either way. The crazy crowd getting behind the English as a spirited fight back. Will it continue here in heat 15? Oh, Moran's away. It really was a little bit here, raising up to the first corner. Ermelenko sweeps between the English pairing, and it is Morton just about hanging on there as they hit the pit turn together. And Morton's gone down spectacularly. Somehow, rather, Ermelenko managed to squeeze past him on the inside. Morton is on his feet, but Moran is in front. In second place, it's Ermelenko. The Americans taking advantage here in heat 15. This is a crucial race with Morton really busting a gun, he hit the deck and where we look for Michael Lee and he's way, way back in all the confusion Michael was dropped and he's got a lot of work to do to catch up on his ball pirate teammate Sam Ermelenko who really has been the surprise packet here for the Americans this puts them back in command as they come into the last lap of the round then Ermelenko third place is Lee it really was a lot of elbows flying up to the first corner. Ermelenko, though, rode bravely. Does put himself about this boy. So Moran will anchor heat number 15 for the Americans. Second place, Ermelenko. Third place, disappointingly, Lee. A maximum heat win for the Americans, which again changes the complexion of the score here. After With event. three heats to go. So 48-42, the score, heat 16 coming up. The news is Morton is OK from the pits. Simon Wigg coming into heat 16 to partner Peter Collins uh, against Bobby Schwartz and Dennis Segalos from the United States. So heat 16, three heats remaining. And the English again, six points down. Just when it seemed they were coming back into the picture and might well have snatched it up on the line. We still have three races up. They still could. Anything could happen in these test matches. As Bobby Schwartz, who was unhappy in his last outing on the bike, appeared to be seizing. Then he got it firing again. But Boogaloo, having won his first uh, race, has only now got two third places. And won't be happy with his contribution towards the American total as we come into heat 16. Looking across the line for heat 16 on the inside, Bobby Schwartz in white for America. Next to him, Simon Wigg, the reserve who has done so much to boost English morale with his fighting tactics. He's in grid two. Grid three has Dennis Segalos. On the outside is Peter Collins, who's had a couple of race wins. And away they go, and it's Wigg, and it is Schwartz. And it's awfully close into that first corner. Wigg shows in front. Schwartz is second. Coming around the outside is Segalos moving up into second place. Collins is at the back, and now Segalos and Wigg are joined together, and Segalos has moved inside and tried and nudge him over, and Wick will not be moved. Again, around the outside, the effort came from Sigalos, and Sigalos gets his wheels back in line and may come pushing through on the inside of this, really, is Speedway for the Connoisseur. The purists will love this as Wick holds out. Sigalos who can attack him inside and outside, swinging again now. Sigalos in the yellow and black helmet come out. He just got the line down the outside. Oh, my word, he's got a right in. There could not have been any ground to spare. And Wick seems to have been taken by surprise, almost lost it there on the pit corner. I think they may have brushed his hand has gone up. There may have been a brush there where they squeezed together down the back straight at full throttle. A dramatic moment here in heat number 16, but it's over the up again for the Americans who take advantage. Schwartz has moved into second place. The last lap it was. Segalos wins it. Schwartz is second and third place. It is Collins, a maximum heat win for the Americans. And that again was a race of high drama. Heat 17, 53-43 the score. The Americans just need two points here to take this third test. And it is Andy Graham coming in for Chris Morton in red to partner Michael Lee in blue for England, in against Lance King and John Cook for the Americans. And so the grid lineup is so important for the English here. They've got to take two maximum heat wins from these last two races if they are to just split this test match with the series poised at one apiece. Let's look at the lineup on the inside. Andy Graham next to him in white. We have Lance King with three. Has Michael Lee. So much rests on his shoulders for England's performance here in Heat 17. And on the outside, the fast starting Tigers, John Cook, who has been one of the more consistent Americans here 
in this third test match. A tremendous test match. It really has built up quite beautifully. And we still might have uh, our fair share of drama to come here in heat 17 with the Americans hoping to anchor it. Lee is just making sure the clutch doesn't get overheating. The start here is going to be vitally important as England really must stonewall. They must do something here in Heat 17. Otherwise, we go into a 2-1 situation for the Americans on this test series. Here we go, Heat 17, and Lee's got away. Lee is away, so too is Cook. Where is Graham? Graham is through on the inside. And Graham, can he just get his wheel up? He cannot. Lee in front in second place. It is Cook in third place. Now here comes Lance King around the outside. And Lee looking back, and he's got Cook right behind him. And King and Graham are locked together for the third place point and take it very wide indeed it was king and cook is in second place this should be enough with lee now stretching away third place graham has shaken off king and where we look for cook and cook is looking back this is the third lap this would still just be enough for the americans if cook can hang on in there and lee has shrugged off his challenge and graham who uh, had king to contend with has shaken him off as well into the last lap but for all the efforts could be John Cook, who once again anchors the Americans. We saw this pairing do similarly for the state siders at Swindon. And just the last two corners to go for Michael Lee in Heat 17, but Cook's second place will be enough for the Americans. He takes it. Third place is Andy Graham, but two points there are enough for the Americans who move into a 2-1 league as the series moves on to Ipswich on Bank Holiday Monday. Yes, America making sure of victory with still one heat to go. I can just give you the result of that heat. It was won by Sean Moran of the States. Alan Graham of England was in second place. And the final score in...